Today we will be talking about a shock caused by plasma loss. Now, the shock caused by uh, plasma loss is also a hypovolemic shock. It is also a hypovolemic loss, a shock. Now, basically, so far we have been discussing the hypovolemic shock that was uh, caused by hemorrhage. So far, we have been discussing the shock caused by hemorrhage. Now, the shock caused by hemorrhage was a hypovolemic shock, but there are other causes of hypovolemic shock as well. Now, the most important causes of hypovolemic shock that are caused by plasma loss are intestinal obstruction and burns. Now, what happens in the intestinal obstruction is that the the in, in the in, the intestinal distractions, the, sorry, the intestinal distension due to the obstruction. This is suppose, for example, an intestine, and it basically twists. It twists or there is some blockage, either it twists on itself or there is some other reason, uh, some mass which basically leads to obstruction. In either cases, there is distension, there is distension. Now the blood vessels, now the blood vessels, basically these are the blood vessels, these are the arterial vessels and these are the venous vessels. Now the blood flow, for example, the obstruction has occurred in this area and this area is being supplied, this area is being supplied by the veins, blood is coming from this side, for example. Blood is coming from this side, but it is blocked. Now the blood cannot go back. Blood starts pooling and the pressure starts building up. Blood is coming from one side, but it cannot go to the other side because distension has occurred. Distension has occurred in the intestine, which is basically leading to back, uh, which uh, basically blocks the venous blood flow. It has blocked the venous blood flow. It is the blood is coming through the arteries. It is coming through the arteries and it is being accumulated here due to some sort of obstruction. Now obstruction occurs due to distension and distension occur because either the intestines are twisted like this this is a straight intestine and it has twisted on itself here which is causing blockage or there is some mass now both of these factors whether the mass or uh, the twisting of the intestine whatever may be the uh, cause of the obstruction it will ultimately lead to distension and the distension will lead to blockage of the venous flow now blood will be coming through one way it will be coming through one way but it will not be able to go back into the venous side suppose for example it is coming this way but it cannot go back so it starts accumulating and there is increase in the intestinal there is increase in the intestinal capillary pressure or the intestinal capillary pressure now this is the artery for example this is the artery it divides into arterioles and then it divides into venules and capillaries now if blood is coming from the artery it is coming through the arterioles and uh, capillaries and into the venules now this area has been blocked this venule or vein has been blocked so blood accumulating here will lead to increased pressure so increased intestinal capillary pressure occur and due to increased pressure this plasma starts leaking out now this plasma may leak into the lumen of the intestine it may leak into the lumen or it may accumulate into the tissue it may for example this is these are the cells of the intestinal wall now fluid accumulate in these spaces between the cells so there will be a leakage of plasma occurring and the leakage will lead to leakage of fluid into the lumen of the intestine or into the tissue and it occurs because due to obstruction there is distension and due to distension there is blockage of the blood flow blood can come on one way but it cannot go back so there is back pressure which leads to increase in the capillary pressure and due to increase in capillary pressure there is leakage of plasma now this leakage of plasma will ultimately lead to hypovolemic shock because the plasma is leaking out so there is a decrease in the volume of blood circulation there is a decrease in the amount of blood that is available for circulation here so because blood is coming here and the plasma is going uh, leaking out now the, the volume of blood has decreased the volume of blood has decreased so the, the remaining of blood the remaining volume of blood is very low and it ultimately leads to decreased venous return the amount of blood coming to the heart is decreased so the cardiac output basically decreases and arterial pressure falls and the the, the, the supply of nutrients to, like oxygen, nutrients, calcium, magnesium, potassium, etc. Supply of nutrients to tissues decreases. So shock develops. And this kind of shock is basically hypovolemic shock. But this hypovolemic shock is not due to hemorrhage. Rather, it is due to plasma loss. And plasma loss in this case has occurred due to the intestinal obstruction. Now, another kind of plasma loss occurs in burns. It occurs in burns. What happens is that there is direct loss of plasma through the skin. There is direct loss of plasma through the skin. Now, suppose, for example, this is the skin and there are a lot of capillaries now basically the cells of the skin they basically protect the loss of plasma in burn this uh, these cells are damaged when they are damaged there is plasma loss directly from the skin and when there is loss of plasma it ultimately leads to decrease in blood volume which leads to decrease in venous return which leads to decrease in arterial pressure which leads to decrease in supply of nutrients to the cell and ultimately shock develops this kind of shock is also a hypovolemic shock and it this kind of shock is also due to plasma loss 
but this plasma loss has most is has occurred here due to burns now the features of the hypovolemic shock due to plasma loss are just like features of shock due to hemorrhage the features of the hypovolemic shock due to plasma loss are just like that of like uh, the features that occurs in shock due to hemorrhage or due to blood loss but one thing in addition to those features is increase in the viscosity of blood there is increase in the viscosity of blood now the rbcs remain inside the vessels the rbcs the red blood cells will not come out into the intestinal lumen similarly red blood cells will not be lost through in a burn case so blood red blood cells will be there in circulation blood fluid will be lost when fluid is lost there is increase in the viscosity of blood so due to viscosity of blood the movement of the movement of blood towards the heart becomes more sluggish so the venous rhythm becomes a more decreases and it ultimately leads to decreased cardiac output and decreased uh, uh, supply of nutrients to the uh, cells so again the the, the 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 severity of the shock the severity of the hypovolemic shock basically increases now these conditions the intestinal obstruction and the burns they cause the hypovolemic shock due to plasma loss now there are some condition in which direct plasma loss will not occur in which direct loss of fluid will occur or dehydration occur now the conditions which basically causes the dehydration they include the sweating diarrhea vomiting nephrotic syndrome decreased intake of fluid destruction of the adrenal gland so all these conditions they cause the fluid loss from all the fluid compartments of the body they will cause loss of fluid from all the compartments all the fluid compartments of the body now fluid wherever in the body whether in the blood or somewhere else it will be lost so it may be lost in sweating in diarrhea in vomiting in nephrotic syndrome or it may the fluid the amount of fluid in itself will be become low due to decrease intake of fluid or if there is destruction of adrenals there is loss of um, aldosterone and there is no absorption of sodium so there will be loss of fluid in the urine now these uh, these conditions the sweating diarrhea vomiting etc they basically causes a fluid loss and they are they are not directly causing the plasma loss but ultimately these condition also lead to decrease in the volume of blood and they also lead to decrease venous return decrease cardiac output decrease arterial pressure and decrease supply of nutrients to the tissue if there is severe sweating severe diarrhea severe vomiting otherwise common uh, sm small amount of sweating diarrhea vomiting these conditions do occur but they will not cause shock only in severe condition there is a big amount of fluid loss from the body and they will ultimately lead to hypovolemic shock now these are the conditions the intestinal intestinal obstruction burns sweating severe sweating severe diarrhea severe vomiting nephrotic syndrome decrease in take of fluid and uh, adrenal glands destruction or loss of uh, aldosterone functions all these factors can cause the shock and the shock will be basically hypovolemic shock now there is another important cause of hypovolemic shock which is basically trauma now trauma if involves any big vessel it can directly lead to blood loss it can cause hemorrhage but it can also cause uh, and then hemorrhage will lead to development of shock but trauma can also cause shock without hemorrhage so it it causes shock with or without hemorrhage now if there is severe trauma there may be leakage of blood in the tissue but there will be no blood loss there will be leakage of blood small amount of rbcs and there will be leakage of uh, plasma in the tissue inside the tissue suppose for example uh, this is a patient now this patient gets trauma and no blood is coming out or there is no hemorrhage now here shock will occur without hemorrhage trauma can cause shock with or without hemorrhage so trauma is an important cause of hypovolemic shock but the hypovolemia can occur due to hemorrhage in which there will be direct loss of blood there will be direct loss of blood hemorrhage but it can also cause shock without hemorrhage in which there will be no direct uh, loss of blood but there will be loss of fluid will which will be accumulated in the tissue the the plasma or the fluid will accumulate in the tissue because due to trauma because uh, due to trauma there is damage of capillaries now these are the capillaries these capillaries they get damaged so there is leakage of plasma and the plasma leakage basically lead to accumulation of fluid in the tissue and it ultimately ultimately leads to hypovolemia although no hemorrhage has occurred the blood loss has not occurred the fluid has been lost and the fluid has basically been accumulated in the tissue but that that fluid which has been accumulated in the tissue it is not available for circulation or pumping so it also lead to it also leads to hypovolemic shock in which the volume of blood is ultimately reduced the venous return is reduced the cardiac output is reduced the arterial pressure is reduced and the uh, supply of nutrients to the uh, different tissues is uh, reduced and it also is a cause of hypovolemic shock so to summarize all the causes of hypovolemic shock the hypovolemic shock can be caused by hemorrhage and there uh, this hypovolemic shock can also be caused by plasma loss in which the most common causes are the intestinal obstruction and the burns and 
hypovolemic shock can also occur due to fluid loss in which there is severe sweating or severe diarrhea or severe vomiting and finally hypovolemic shock can occur due to trauma without any hemorrhage like trauma will occur but hemorrhage will not occur fluid loss will occur but it will the fluid will accumulate in the tissue and it will not be available for circulation so the hypovolemic condition will occur so that's all about uh, shock caused by plasma loss similarly shock caused by a fluid loss and trauma all these factors basically lead to uh, hypovolemic shock thanks a lot for watching the video